We really see Augie just trying to grab onto life as hard as possible. It creates an interesting moral dynamic for the viewer, but the most violent, horrific thing that we do is done by ostensibly the good guys. This is the second time the story has been adapted ahead of the 2023 television series called Three Body. Netflix's newest obsession with viewers takes them on a journey with a girl with a scientific background and face humanity's greatest threat, according to the premise. One of the things that sets this show apart is that one of the main drivers is a thing that really happened. And that's generally not the case. That we have nicknamed the Oxford Five, that doesn't exist in, in the books. The, the main protagonists of the three books in the trilogy uh, typically have fairly little Today we wanted to share some behind the scenes moments in regards to each episode and what had to be done to piece each part together. It's a pretty heavy show, so we needed to get a sense of who they are as people before the real weight of the show is thrown on their shoulders. Huge amount of heavy lifting in episode one because it was important to get all the chess pieces onto the board, not just the characters. But before we get into more of these moments, today's trivia question. Alexander Wu is one of those responsible for creating this version of the series. What other fantasy horror drama was he responsible for writing for? Leave your guesses in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. Fearing, fearing the unknown. I mean, that's what, what causes the the, the 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 divide in humanity in in the world once they understand that there's a potential existential threat mm. and uh you know is that the fear within our own minds that creates that as well you know i think it's the themes and i think what's really cool the three body problem series entails the book titles three body problem the dark forest and death's end as there are many fans to this series, it's difficult when adapting as it's important to get certain facts right, but also put your own twist on things. You want it to land with the audience. So that also includes how you then choose your camera work. Because if you become all like, oh, I'm gonna do a big zoom in, I'm gonna do this really like clever tricksy shot just before this happens or while this is happening, it kind of detracts. We have gotten to see what it was like from the beginning in episode one of the beginning stages of bringing these books to life in a new way. The idea of experiencing these things through the point of view of someone you care about. This is literally someone's point of view of their own eyes. And then for the first time in shooting us into almost like a first person yeah. video game where she's looking at her own hands. And so we experience that the way that Jen is experiencing it. We are walked through from the first scene and how it sets up the rest of the series. It was important for accuracy and staying true to the books for these creators. We're dealing with a historic event. So it's really tr how do we accurately uh, recreate China in the 60s and 70s. That's a huge challenge. Uh, first, we didn't shoot it in China. <laughs> Background actors had to learn phonetically all the chants and got all the chants down. Moving on to episode two of the series, the creators continue to explain what is happening and the best way to communicate to the outside world. She chooses science and she chooses reality and she chooses the hope that maybe somewhere else out there there's somebody better than what the world has offered up to her thus far in her life. As we move on to episode 3, we're introduced to the headset game and the casting process of John Bradley and how this character, for him, would be very much like his own personality in some ways. I'm Francis Bacon. I was intrigued because they said to me, we're going to write a character for you that's more like yourself than any character you've ever played. The game found something we're both familiar with. You better not have gone through my search history. In amongst all the bluster and in amongst all the humour and the wisecracking, there's a really beautiful soul in there who really wants to take care of his friend. But real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow. For us creating that, it's very important to make it very organic. So we want to pull off something which looks hyper real, but to a point of realism that is really quite interesting and propelling. 
When Bradley first read the scene, I didn't quite know how to read it, he says. I felt a little bit slighted. It didn't take long though for Bradley to change his perspective. I realized that if there's one thing that David and Dan have done very well over the years, it's deaths. He says they only tend to kill people if they think the audience are going to care. Oppenheimer's mistress died the same way, on her knees and in a tub. When we first shot the scene, I thought, <laughs> how many people are gonna know this reference? And now thanks to Christopher Nolan, you know, it's, it's a very, very big, very well-made explanation of this moment. And speaking of the headset game, we got to see the scenes of the headset and how they managed to merge visual effects on the reflection of the helmet when people were looking at it. They create their simple shots visually, but they're not simple to on a visual effects level. Like every single one of them, you need a 360 degree picture of the entire room you're sitting in and it needs to be painstakingly mapped onto this object to create the mirrored image that you're seeing. Episode four gets a deep dive as well with the creators. For Ye, who has now left Red Coast Base and is is working as a, as a professor, but there's she still has not met anyone else who she connects with and and sh and could possibly share this worldview that she has, except this one guy that she met once, and even after years, they're still in each other's minds. Judgment Day, Episode 5, questions begin to rise. Liam Cunningham elaborates on this. He knows what the job is, and he knows what he has to do to accomplish that job. He has a certain morality. Uh, with possibly a small M. Anyway, sorry for your loss. Although it sounds like he wasn't much help around the house. I love Thomas Wyatt. In, in my mind, he's a good guy. More research is involved as we go further in the series with episode six. In, in watching that scene and writing it for those actors, I think it's always fun when you have an argument where you can understand both sides, where you understand why Jin is wants to fight back against these aliens who are coming to invade our planet. And from Augie's point of view, you know, they're not going to be here for 400 years. Everyone in you know and love, their kids, their grandkids, their great grandkids will be gone by that point. Rosalda Chow reflects on her character's role in episode 7. The only person left who reflected a piece of her daughter was Saul. I do think that she wants the best for him. So Einstein dies. He finds himself in heaven. The Einstein in heaven joke, it just does kind of it makes you wonder what the hell Ye is talking about. And lastly, in episode eight, setting up for more and the performance from Jess. This friend that she's known for years and years, um, who's been by her side for so long, um, is actually maybe the love of her life, and now it's too late. And then the, the one kind of, as you said, the moonshot before, if you still believe he's alive as a frozen brain, Maybe the aliens can bring him back. Well, that's not going to happen now. And there's speculation that more seasons are to come. Although a second season has yet to be confirmed, the plan is to adapt the whole trilogy, which would likely require three or more seasons. And Keith, head of construction, genius, came up with using this idea of neoprene. And that was rigged onto a very simple rig, but whereby those strips could be pushed and pulled and angled up or down. And it made these strips look like they had been mangled Netflix has not publicly greenlit a second season, but in several interviews, showrunners have revealed that they envision up to four seasons in total to adapt all three books. Given the popularity of the series, so far it seems inevitable. And you were just like, yeah, cool. You have to focus on character and relationships where it can be brought down to the human. When you're dealing with a drama that affects all of humanity, things may not be as black and white. So we really see Augie just trying to grab onto life as hard as possible. And as far as the answer to our trivia question, Wu has written for the drama series True Blood. In his past, a 2008 drama about a telepathic waitress in a small Louisiana town finds her world turned upside down upon meeting her first vampire, Bill, and falling in love with him. That's actually in a picture in Evan's office all along, which some people will notice and some people won't and we realize that the little girl that needed to be protected was her own daughter, which tells you a lot about what it means to have 
failed her daughter in this way and then found out it was all for nothing. But we wanted to turn this around to you guys. What do you think about all these moments? Which one was your favorite? And what do you think about this interesting new series? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys. Raj is in most of those interactions, he's a plus one which is sort of a cool place to be in when there's an old friend group and you're the fly on the wall. You get to observe these different dynamics, how the histories play out in real time. Are you two fighting right now? Oh, fucking oh, boy. Oh, yeah.